Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiakos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I'm going to sign or no for Olympiakos, I said, you're a pretty good deal, like my friend. I can't speak, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rada Malaka! Saga para poli. What's happening, everyone? Gate 7 International, another Sunday edition after Olympiacos versus Ike. Difficult, difficult derby, which we're going to get into in a second. But first, I'd like to welcome my co-host for the night, Kosos Lianos. Kosa, how are you doing today? Always a pleasure, uh... Uh, my friend, always a pleasure, Adi. Good to be here. Uh, lots to cover, lots to cover. And a big hello to uh, Gate 7 International's always wonderful, wonderful audience. Yeah, there, we're going to get into it. There's a lot to discuss, um, but we'll we'll get there after, of course, uh, a few quick announcements. Uh, first and foremost, guys, those of you that are tuning in now, and uh, there's a couple of you that have been jumped in, some of you that were in the waiting room already, uh, for those of you that, that don't already follow the show, uh, don't forget to like, uh, like the video, subscribe if you don't do so already. It costs you nothing. It takes about two seconds to do, and it really helps. Every engagement we get, whether it's a like, a comment, a subscribe, if you don't do it already, those, those things all help us with the algorithm. It helps it spread to more and more and more people. So these are ways that we can continue to expand the red and white community, and every time you do it, it helps us reach another person. As we've mentioned in the past, more and more people join this community literally every day. Um, we're we're right at about 2,500 subs now on the channel, going towards 3K. And don't forget, when we hit 3K, we have another giveaway coming. Uh, our first sponsor of the night is Piraeus International. For those of you that are shipping things in and out of Greece, in and out of the United States, anywhere around the world, use our friends at Piraeus International for any of your freight forwarding or shipping needs, give them a call at 410-675-4696. That is U.S. country code 001 uh, to start before you put the number in. And you can also visit them at their website. It's www.piraeusintl.com. And for you betters out there, we've been sponsored this season by BetUS. Uh, use our promo code GATE7INTL. That is all caps. Somebody did ask me that yesterday. So all capitals, Gate7INTL, go to betus.com.pa. We always provide links anytime we show you guys some betting odds that we like, anytime we share anything like that. So you can use that link, go directly to the landing page. When you do your setup on your first deposit, they will match your deposit 125%. So on your first deposit, after you set everything up, if you decide you want to put in 100 bucks, they will match that 100 and plus another 25 more so you'll start with $225 on a $100 deposit. World Cups coming up, we're going to be doing a lot of betting, um a lot of uh odds making, we're going to discuss some of uh player statistics as well. I'm going to be doing some betters corners where I discuss what I think some of the best bets are. I'm going to be gambling as well along with you guys. And when you guys do bet, also share your bets with us, we'll share them on our socials. So this is something we want to engage with the community with. So don't forget promo code GATE7INTL at betus.com.pa. So, Costa, as we mentioned, Olympiacos Ike 0-0. Uh, tough game, first half especially. Uh, I had brought up in previous shows why I thought Ike. I had mentioned, guys, Bonathan Icos. I think they're going to drop points. I don't think they're as great of a team as that looks like in the standing. Ike, to me, was a team that played better ball, more free-flowing, more attractive, more dangerous. And you saw it, especially in that first half today. They were the better team. Uh, and as the half wore on, they got more and more dangerous. Things evened out a little bit in the second half. We looked a little bit better. But in the end, there was no um, there's no tie, there was nothing to break the deadlock, I should say. 0 0, we fall to minus 12 in the standings. And before we get into uh, some of the discourse between you and me, uh, we did have a short message that was left to us by our good friend Kostas Nevoyanis uh, that he wanted to share with you guys as well uh, his thoughts regarding the match. Right, guys, here I am with some post match thoughts. Um, not the result we wanted, not the one we, we needed and hoped for, but let's be real. 
Olympiacos has been playing catch up since the beginning of the season. Getting into the Europa League was important uh, for the prestige of the club, but we saw what happened in the group stages. This roster was just simply not ready to compete in two competitions. The way it was built, things we've talked about before, it's an understatement. Our performances in Greece have improved over time, but we're still months behind the other teams that had proper pre-seasons, time to gel the squads, build teams. The pitch doesn't lie. And on the pitch today, Ajax was the better team, particularly in the first half. I don't think I can remember or recall ever seeing a Greek team come to Karaiskaki and play the way that Ajax did in the first half. Olympiagos had no answers to Almeida's diamond in the middle of the park. And all we could do in the first half is hope for a good counter-attack that never came. And it could have been bad at half-time. Uh, we were well fortunate to go in at half-time, nil-nil. Second half, we came out of the blocks much better, uh, more awake, more alive. And we got the goal, which was ruled out for offsides. And then came the smoke uh, from the pyro and that killed the rhythm that we were we were gaining, the momentum that we were gaining coming out for, for the second half. The manager even admitted it at the end of the game. So if anyone is accusing me of being a patataka, uh, the manager's even talked about that and commented uh, as such at the end of the game. It's not the first time that that happens. I will argue against the popular current that the break uh, comes at a good time for Olympiagos. It's an opportunity to level the playing field again, an opportunity to catch up and, and return to the second round of the league with fresh ideas, maybe some fresh faces. Lots to think about after tonight's draw. The title race is mathematically not over but we have one hell of a steep climb. Uh, Olympiacos needs to be perfect in the second half of the season if we want to have any hope of mounting a title challenge. Have a good show, guys. Kalik Bobi, greetings. Ke Hiratismata to all our watchers and, and listeners. So, Costa, give me give me your thoughts about the game today. Uh, how, did, how did you see it on a whole? What did you see in each half? Go for it. I feel like Costa made some very good points. He pretty much said everything. Still don't know what a patatakias is. I'm going to have to look into that. Uh, well, let's take, uh, let's take the whole thing um, from, the, uh, from the start. I mean, uh, Mitchell uh, chose his usual 4-2-3-1 formation with Alexandros Paschalakis between the sticks. Gonzalo Avila at right back. Ole Grebchuk on the left. Everyone's favorite left back. Uh, Socrates Papastathopoulos and Andreas Doi appear to have become uh, the preferred centre-back duo, which we can't really argue against. Jan and Vila and Juan Ginbom, uh, who set to, uh, to travel to Qatar as part of the South Korea national team, uh, teamed up in midfield with James Rodriguez at number 10, Pepe El on the, on the right wing, Giorgos Masuras on the other side, and Cedric Bakambu leading the attack. Uh, Kostas was absolutely right. I, as well, cannot remember a single Greek team playing as well or even better than Ike did at the Karaiskaika. I've never seen Olympiakos struggle this much against a Greek team at, uh, at Karaiskaika. Olympiakos have lost quite a few times at Karaiskaika, but were never dominated at, uh, at Karaiskaika with a possession for Ike that was over 60%, almost 70% at the, uh, in the first half. Uh, Kostas was absolutely right. Uh, Olympiacos had no answers for the uh, diamond formation that Ayek went for with uh, Jonsson and Pineda in midfield and Amrabat as well as Gatsinovic uh, on the wings. Uh, Ayek were absolutely dominating uh, the first half. Uh, and to be honest, like Olympiacos should feel, uh, should feel a, at least a little, uh, a little thankful they didn't concede. On the 16th minute, Ayek came just a whisker away from opening the scoring. When uh, Levi Garcia got the ball past Alexandros Paschalakis, only for Socrates to clear it almost on the line. Uh, three minutes later, uh, there was a good and amazing uh, back heel from Gatsinovic that set Rota in front of Paschalakis, but Paschalakis made one of many important saves to deny him. Uh, on the 26th minute, Olympiakos got their first shot on target with a weak long range shot by James that was saved by Thanasiadis. On the 28th minute, there was a poor back pass by Envila that almost set uh, Garcia in front of Paschalakis only for the Greek uh, goalkeeper to deny him. Uh, on the 37th minute, Garcia shot from a tight corner, went out for a goal kick. 
uh, Olympiacos went into uh, went, went to the dressing room with a nil-nil score with a goalless draw, which was, in, in my opinion, a little too good for them considering the first half performance. On the 58th minute, there was a goal by James uh, that was uh, denied. That was uh, denied for an offside. Masuras was caught just a few inches offside. It was his left arm, if I remember correctly. Uh, that was the only time I got sloppy, to be honest, because they left immense space for James uh, to, to beat Athanasiadis. That was their only mistake in the entire match, but they, but they should feel lucky that the Masuras was offside. Then Smoke took over, Karaiskaiki, from certain uh, members of the fans. That killed Olibiakos' incredible rhythm, and that allowed Ike to regain their tempo. During that time, in the first uh, 13 minutes of the second half, Olibiakos were basically playing were basically playing their game until Smoke took over, and well, from then on, it was all Ike again. 67th minute, Garcia's effort from a tight corner denied by Pascalakis. 74th minute, Socrates missed a close-range header that was denied by Thanasiadis. Fanfert came extremely close with a header of his own uh, two minutes before full-time. Uh, just missed Pascalakis' bottom right corner. And then Socrates in the third minute of stoppage time tried a, a close-range header that was denied by uh, Thanasiadis. And that's where Papastathopoulos uh, suffered his head injury. Incredible performance by, Pas- by Papastathopoulos in this match, uh, esp- especially from Pascalakis as well. <sighs> to be honest with you, Ari, uh, I cannot see how Olympiacos right now can can bounce back after this. Four derbies, zero losses, zero wins, excuse me, two losses along the way. Uh, four points away from Ike in second place, 12 points away from Panathinaikos in first place, at first in first place. Do you know how many? Uh, what's the record for Olibiaco, for Olibiacos' consecutive wins in the league this season so far? Do you know what the record is so far? What four wins, maybe two wins? Olibiacos have only managed to win two matches in a row this season. That's the best that they, they, they've managed. Really? I mean, Since Michel came back, all season, all season, Olibiacos all season. only won two C two go two matches in a row in Greece in the league. Only two matches in a row. Well, this is what it, it this is what it is right now. Uh, I, I told you before the show that if if Olympiacos pull this off, then we're talking about Ike and Panathinaikos screwing up like no Greek team has ever screwed up before. Yeah. If Panathinaikos lose the title, if, if, a, if, if they've been so consistent, Panathinaikos, if they lose the title this season, Ivan Jovanovic deserves the sack, in my opinion. I mean, they've been so consistent, and Olympiacos have been so inconsistent. Ike have been really good, but they proved that they can drop points. They lost to Panathinaikos as well. I, I, I mean, I hate to say that the title hunt is over. It looks like it is, but I want to, I want to get the fans ready for this. Like, if it doesn't work out, I want the fans to be ready for this because it's it is quite likely that they will, uh, they will, uh, they will miss out. Yeah, the discussion was that we needed to win this match because yep. we knew we against that Adromiros hasn't been the best. And then honestly, I was watching the the Panathinaikos game against Atromiros. The second that Atromiros got the red card, I turned it off. I knew I knew that Panathinaikos was winning that match. Uh early red card, it would have been tragic if they didn't if they didn't win. But we needed to win so that at least we could keep pace with the 10 points. 10 points wasn't easy either. Uh, now we're we're 12 points. That's four full games. Four full games behind. Again, Costa already brought up, Costa Levoyanis brought up that they're, mathematically we we aren't away from it yet. And the the center back of Ike brought up the same thing, uh, Harold Mukudi, that he believes Bonathan and Icos are dropping points and there's going to be plenty of opportunities to, uh, to catch up in, in that respect. So, um, but again, we just made our, our job even harder because we are, uh, as our, as our friend Marcial says, this team is unable to get wins in some, in these big games. It's we're unable to get wins, whether it's a derby, whether it's uh, a Europa league game, a champions league game, we are, unable to get these wins in yeah. these situations and it's difficult uh and in a in in a game like today you you saw what a team that has been that has had its pieces together had its game plan been working on that same game plan game plan with those pieces a polished team you see what it looks like 
And this Ike team, in my opinion, has the the best offensive unit in in Greece right now. And I'm not saying like they're maybe in terms of the individual players. I'm just saying the way that they play. This is the best I've seen a team play all against us all season. I don't remember the last time Ike played against us like this. Anytime they've come to the Karaskaiki, I don't remember. Uh, I, I I don't remember them playing this well. Even when they won the even when they won the title with Manolo Jimenez, I thought they had a good team back then. But I don't remember them playing this well. And um, there was a comment, I believe, from TF91 here um, uh, saying that he wasn't that impressed. Um, look, man, I, I okay, I, I respect your opinion, but I have to wonder what what you were watching because they, my friend, the interplay they had. Did you not see how they were cutting our defense up in the final third? The the one two touch ball, the pass and move. I mean, they were they were playing how we expect Libya Costa to play. Our midfield, by all accounts, was our strength going into this game. We discussed it on our socials. We discussed it uh, with with respect to build up build up data, passing data, all those things. This was our our strength was in our midfield. They have much better wingers. They have much better width than we do. Our game plan was to break that up, and hopefully, we could build out of our midfield with our immense quality. It was, we couldn't do it. They overpowered our midfield. Gasinovich was incredible. That, he's, a, he's a great player. He was all over the place. Um, Amrabat, I don't think Amrabat had the best game, but he imposed himself. Say what you want about him. Maybe he didn't have a huge impact, but he was everywhere, just physically, physically dominating so many different players. Yeah, he was catching them with elbows too. I'm surprised he made it out of the game without a red, to be honest with you. But that's a different story altogether. This they are a, they were a good team, fantastic team, and they, in my opinion, this the they were the, they're the best team in Greece, period. So, bringing all of that into consideration. Going back to the game, Costa, there were things that I thought we did incorrectly when we in the approach to this game. Okay, the starting lineup, I don't think there was any surprises. I, I'm taking, I'm beginning to take a lot more issue with the Pep BL, the way we use Pep BL. We continue to play him out of position, and he continues, continues to be ineffective out there. How many times did he lose the ball today? getting stuck out in the corner, getting, I, I mean, there, there's just no link up between him and James sometimes. And it's so frustrating. I'd rather have a real winger out there. You know, it's, it, it's unfortunate because Pepiel, you know, you, when you want to have the most talented players, you want Pepiel and James on the field. I get it, but it's, there's nothing coming from it. We, we just have to, we have to figure something else out here because that's not working at the same time. I also am not a fan right now of, of Masuras on the left side either. Because he's been he was ineffective offensively. He had a couple of great runs. And then I think, you know, outside of that situation where he got caught off sides when he got the ball played into James Rodriguez for the goal, that if we count that offsides play as a decent play, which technically it doesn't count because he was whistled off sides, he didn't do much for us except defensively. And something's got to change here. We have you can't expect to be pooling results out of these games when your width is not doing anything for you in these games. I don't know how you feel about that, but that's that's just something that's continuing now to frustrate me, and it's continuing to bring it to to uh, like a head point for me because you see what a team like Ike that has width, and look what it did for them. God, it opened things up for them. And almost every buildup looked dangerous, but we don't have that. And it's just frustrating because by God, we have, we do have more talented players than do, than they do. Yep. They might have a better team, which I, that's 100% arguable, <laughs> but we have better players, better talented players. And we, there's gotta be better ways to get stuff out of our, our, our width here. Is it just me? Am I, am I going crazy here? 
or is this the best we can expect? No, no, absolutely. I mean, I agree with you. I, I mean, Costa was right. At the end of the day, guys, this whole thing that's happening at Olympiacos is logical because there was a disastrous preseason preparation, absolutely disastrous preseason preparation. Olympiacos have been playing catch-up compared to the rivals who had a full summer. I don't think there was any European ambition. So when they got eliminated by all those nobodies in the conference, that was actually they were actually um, they they were actually relieved by that because that means they can concentrate on the league. Uh, whereas Olympiacos, I mean, this is a team created by three different managers. Talking about too many cooks spoil the broth. Uh, it was impossible for them to come to combine uh, the Greek league and the uh, Europa League. I mean, the European campaign shows it. The worst European campaign since the 2018 Champions League uh, elimination with only two points. Uh, this, th there's going to be a preseason 2.0 now with the World Cup break, just over a month uh, preparation. There's too many players. The, the, the roster is still inflated. Um, there's, st there's still, I mean, it's so ironic and still so frustrating because there is so much quality in this team, but it's just so difficult to get the most out of this team. So many options, but there's just it just doesn't seem to gel the way you would hope it would. Pepe L as well. I mean, I cannot understand why Olympiacos brought such a such a rare gem, and he's consistently playing out of position. The guy's a number ten. He's not a winger, guys. Yeah, maybe a false nine. Maybe a false nine. He's not a winger. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with you, Ari. Like, this is a team that. Ha this is an Olympiacos team that spent the entirety of the first half of the season not winning a single big game. Uh, I don't know where they go from here. Like, I just cannot see them overcoming a consistent team like Panathinaikos. Panathinaikos are an effective team. They're not an impressive team. They're an effective right. team. They just exactly. get the job done. They get the job done. Okay. Olympiacos don't. Olympiacos are the kind of team that score an average of 1.1 goals per game in the league. Uh, they are a team that uh, had nine games in which they conceded uh, crucial goals in the late stages of a match. I mean, you don't win titles like that, guys. Zero wins out of four derbies, two of which you've lost. Karaiskaik is no longer the, uh, how the do we castle. call it in English? The castle, do we call it the, the fortress? That's a better word. Yeah. The yeah, fortress exactly. it used to be. Is that how you win titles? I mean, I'm telling you, if Olympiacos wins this, if Olympiacos win this title, we're going to be talking about Icon Panathinaikos screwing up. Like, I don't think has anyone actually won the title anywhere in a big league like that after a horrible first half of the season, coming back and winning the title against consistent teams. We're, we're talking about Panathinaikos and Ike like shooting themselves on both feet. This is going to be unbelievable if this happens, guys. Like. It's not up to Olympiacos anymore. It's up yeah. to the other teams screwing. Yes, the playoffs are coming, but do you trust Olympiacos winning every single playoff game? That Olympiacos? I mean, as things stand this season, right now, no. I mean, I'm not convinced that we can because we've seen what happens in the big games. We right now we we play. There's it's there's plenty of games that we play well. Like the game against Balk, I still think we were the better team. The game against Panathinaikos, we were the better team. We just don't we just don't seem to have what it takes to finish the chances that we get. And this has been this isn't just an issue with the derbies. This has been an issue all season. I mean, uh, there's a there's there's a couple of comments here that address so many of these things. But there's one here from George Gadilis. And this is like when I was talking about Masuras, this is the, the first thing I thought about. Uh, George brings up the breakaway in the first half. <laughs> where Masuras is like he doesn't even look at the options that are around him, and then of course he loses the ball. Like today, he was one of the worst when it came to holding on the possession. I mean, just just I I pulled up um, Sofa Score here. The Masuras had more losses. He lost possession more times than he attempted passes. Jesus. He only had he Masuras only attempted to pass the ball nine times. Okay. But he lost the ball almost a dozen times today, so like that's pretty absurd. And it, it's just, 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 just one of the the frustrations for me, and 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 just one of the things. And but and that hasn't changed. Like even since Michel has arrived, has arrived, like we haven't changed that. This has been a frustration all season. 
And that the Masuras of the beginning of last year, the first half of last year, hasn't come back. We've continued to have the same Masuras. The, the frustrating, the, the Masuras that can't win anything one-on-one. The Masuras that does track back and can do decent things defensively. But the Masuras that can't beat a defender. The Masuras that doesn't pick his head up to play the ball correctly. The Masuras that can't shoot. He's not, he's not a winger. He's kind of like a forward playing out wide. If you guys remember, um, Patrick Kasky, one of our uh, contributors for the blog, did a very nice write-up about him. And he said the same thing. He, he pulled up the data. And he did a very nice analysis of Masuras, and Masuras came up as an enigma. He He's a statistical enigma as far as wingers are concerned because he doesn't do anything you expect a traditional winger to do. But his usually his final third product, the volume of uh, chances he gets, the that type of thing is way more than a lot of wingers get. So he, he's just it's just a very weird, very, very weird thing. Um there's also a couple of comments here about Avila. This one from Dean Knack, actually, Gosta, I think we should touch on this because we've touched on a lot of the more negative aspects. But Dean Knack here brings up, on a positive note, our center defense and goalkeeping has been great. Yes, ever since we stuck with Ndoy and Socrates, things were have been very good. Now, Socrates today was legendary. I mean... For me, it was, uh, you know, you could argue man of the match for him. He's he's a person up there. I mean, saves the goal. He was getting forward. He made some very important interceptions. Um, Socrates was, he, he was screaming at everybody on the pitch. Uh, very great performance from him. And Doy, who I don't think maybe it had as good of a, a game as Socrates, still had a great game. I mean, he was tussling with everybody. He didn't, it was another derby. And he was aggressive, getting in everybody's face. I loved it. I mean, every game I fall I fall in love more with this player. Andrea Doe mm-hmm. is fantastic. And the Pascal Likis, I mean, you know what? I I was very concerned about the, him as a signing. I brought this up last week. I brought this up for the Panathinaikos Derby. But this 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 guy is is winning me over. He had some big saves today. The when he came out. After the was it after the Mvila uh, back pass he he came all the way outside the box to just kick, to to yeah, clear the ball out. Has, if if Reb if, if Rebchuk had done that, do you know what we would be saying about Rebchuk after what oh. he did with Sporar last week? Oh yeah, it was Mvila uh, now. That but was that was Mvila. No, that was a bad yeah. mistake by Mvila. Who and it was a terrible know, mistake. Yeah, absolutely terrible. terrible. But he doesn't do that often. That's, the, that's no. the difference. And that was probably the the one major mistake he made all game. Uh, I'll give that to him because he doesn't make very many mistakes very often. But but Pascalakis, I guarantee you, Thomas Vachlik isn't coming out of the goal to to do that. So. Uh, very, very, very cool. I mean, uh, that, so I, that is a huge positive, like areas that we were very kind of worried about in the beginning of the season, center back and goalkeeping are now strong points with us. So, uh, it's, I can't believe it, man. I, I don't know about you, but I can't believe that this, if, if you had asked me if this was the situation, like those three positions we would have fixed of all the positions that, where we have different talent, that's the one I would have thought we would continue to have problems with. I would have thought we would have found solutions at this point with the striking options, with the wingers, but apparently, uh, no, apparently not. Well, I mean, Socrates Papastathopoulos has rolled back the years in his last two appearances. Incredible performance at Leofores against Panathinaikos. That yep. that tackle to deny Sporar's uh Spot our shot from the uh, from inside the box after Ole grabs who basically almost gifted Panathinaikos the win. That was that was basically him remembering his Premier League time with Arsenal. That was a totally Premier League like tackle, and you saw how crazy he was going. He, he hugged Sporar. That's how happy he was. And today, I mean, he cleared the ball after Levi Garcia got the ball through. Pascal likes incredible performance by Socrates. Absolutely incredible. I've always rated him. I never stopped believing in Socrates. I mean, the guy yeah. is a top, top defender. And I feel like Olympiacos are going to miss him when his time comes. And he's forming a fantastic duo with uh, with Doi. I mean, guys, if, if I had told you that uh, Socrates is going to be the starting center back for the season, a lot of you would be uh, grimacing. But the truth is, at the end of the day, you just need a center back duo that works. I mean, Sienkefeld was struggling at Panathinaikos, but then Magnusson came in and they just... They fit together. It's all about fitting. It's all about, it's all about making up for your partner's uh, shortcomings, and that's what's really happening with that partnership. 
Alexandros Paschalakis, what can I say, guys? I mean, also, I'm putting my hand up. I was one of his doubters. I was not happy with that signing. I thought that was not the kind of goalkeeper Olympiakos need. I thought he was a liability. He, I feel like he made a lot of mistakes with Pauk. I feel like he did not inspire confidence between the sticks at Pauk. I still believe he didn't inspire confidence between the sticks. But my God, at Olympiakos, he's been a revelation. Guys, five league games, four clean sheets. The guy has yet to concede a goal from open play. I'm going to say this again. Pascal Laikis has not conceded a goal from open play. He's only conceded a goal from that uh, from that blasted penalty against Panathinaikos. It took a penalty and a soft one against Panathinaikos oh, to beat him. Oh, Incredible don't bring up. Incredible performance. I apologize. I apologize to Pascal Laikis. I'm saying this publicly for doubting him. The guy has been absolutely amazing. Uh, we're going to get to the man of the match uh, ratings, but I think I feel like you know there's been a bit of a spoiler alert already from my from my end. Uh, well, really quickly, we're 30 minutes in, and already a few hundred people have tuned into the show. Um, uh, right now, the active viewers are a lot more of you are tuning in, listening to us. So, for those of you that are just jumping in now, just joining us for the conversation. Subscribe if you don't already, and don't forget to like the show. This is how the algorithm spreads us to more and more people. We continue to grow this community. So real quickly, for those of you that are just joining in now, don't forget to hit the, the like button and subscribe so that you can keep up with all of the red and white content. Uh, Gosa, there's, uh, there's a bunch of great comments coming in, so I think we should uh, take a quick break from – uh, some of the discussion and, and get to some of these. There's a really good one here from Jack Jackakis. I love this name. Are Rota and, and Mahmadi better than Avila and Rebchuk? Well, they certainly played better than them today. <laughs> and actually, interestingly enough, I didn't think Rebchuk had a really bad game today. Uh, this was a game where a lot more of his defensive attributes were needed. And I thought he did decently well actually getting back. Um, he also had a couple of decent... Uh, ball, you know, runs forward and and playing a couple of crosses, and so he wasn't horrible today. Avila, on the other hand, Avila's uh, was for me, if not the worst player on the pitch, one of the worst. Um, mm. uh, one of the worst. I, I don't know how you feel, but I, I, this comment is, I agree with them here. I think they're both better than Avila and Rebchuk, at least how they played today. What do you? How do you feel? Well, yeah, I mean, they were better than them today. I mean, Olbiakos is. Curse at fullback continues since the 2019-2020 season with um, uh, Omar El Abdelawi and Costa Simicas on the right and left, respectively. Uh, it's amazing because Olympiacos have a total of six fullbacks right now, and it seems like no one is really cutting it. Um, Sime Vresalico, pretty much a former footballer right now. Gonzalo Avila, the only guy you got for right back. Maris Vusai is not a fullback. That's ridiculous. On the left, you got Leonardo Kutris, who seems to be done with that Olympiacos. Uh, you have uh, Ole Kreabchuk, who is Ole Kreabchuk. You have Marcelo, who, you know, talking about former footballers. If anything, guys, I'm going to say this. Mar if Marcelo doesn't get his act together, like, he's going to be Olympiacos' biggest transfer flop of all time. He's going to be what Dimitar Berbatov is at Pauk. He's going to be what Michael Essien is at Panathinaikos. He's going to be what Erika Rabesatratana is at Aik. That's what well. That's what's going to happen to him if he doesn't pull. If if he doesn't get serious, and then you got Doron Leitner who doesn't play. Why? Take it to the, tell us on the comment section. We would love to know. Yeah, I mean, still no fullbacks at Olympiacos. Uh, obviously, Ike's fullbacks played better. Ike's midfield played better. It was Ike were the better team today. If anything, Olympiacos should feel lucky. I mean. Uh, Stop me, stop me if you want, but when uh, when my, when uh, Vagelis Marinakis, the Olympiacos owner, came out and said that Olympiacos are the best team in Greece, Olympiacos haven't proved it that they're the best team in Greece at all this season. Like I said, four derbies, zero wins. The best you've managed is two game to win to win two games in a row in Greece. That's the best you've managed. Like I'm just saying, like if I were a boxer and I was about to face Tyson Fury, already a very difficult match against an undefeated heavyweight, one of the best ever, and then I said I'm the best boxer ever, do you know how much pressure, how much added pressure, needless pressure I'm putting on myself? Because if I don't beat Tyson Fury, everybody's going to laugh at me on top of that. Yes. 
all yeah. the hype, everything I said, poof, it, I, 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 it, 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 it loses every legitimacy. Olympiacos are not the best team in Greece, guys, so far. Maybe they will be after uh, the World Cup break. Maybe they will be. But it doesn't look good right now. And uh, Olympiacos have a lot of catch-up to do. And I'm going to flip the script a little bit. And I'm going to ask you, man. I mean, Nitzel. I mean, Olympiacos surely can't afford to look for another manager right now with another with a second preseason coming up. But, I mean, is he the kind of guy who's going to overlook Olympiacos' build-up heading to next season? I think we have to see the season out before we can make that decision. I am, I've am i always been a proponent of, it, you know, somebody has to earn the opportunity. And if Michel finds a way after the break to see us on the path, the second half of the season, we win our derbies, we get into the playoffs. And, you know, even if we don't win, if it, he at least gets us into that position to, to almost make that miraculous comeback, then, then, then we have to say, okay, did he earn this? Do we give him a shot at building a team now? I think we have to hold that discussion and wait and see what happens. Uh, because, uh, you know, if, if, this, if we ended it right now and said, oh, has he done enough at this point? It's obviously it's a no. Um, has he done enough to make improvements? Yes, absolutely. He's made, we have to say we have some improvements. We're playing, we are playing better. Um, you know, we haven't found that finishing product that we haven't found the ability to get those results, those wins, but we have, we're playing better. And that does count for something, at least in my book. Uh, now, Costa, we have another really good question here. This one's from Concept Calcio. If Pep and James can't fit in the team together, who do we prioritize moving forward? James, who realistically will move on, or Pep, who we invested six million in? This is a really good question. What What's your answer for this question? Yeah, I feel like it's a bit of a trap question, if I'm being honest, because like. I feel like, I mean, just like you said, I mean, Mitzel deserves time. Mitzel deserves an opportunity to prove himself. So, so do those two players deserve it to learn how to play with uh, with each other. I mean, it is, uh, it, it is a, it, 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 this upcoming World Cup break, it is a gift for Olympiacos because they will get the chance to have a, an actual preseason. I feel like Hamas could play down the wing with uh, Pepe Yel at number 10. I feel like that is very feasible. Um or maybe, you know, a different kind of system that would see both James and uh, Pepiel playing behind Bakambu, kind of like Atalanta had. Uh, what was that, Ari? It was uh, the, uh, it, that it was like a, one with the two, like one behind two strikers, that type of deal. Wasn't it two behind the one striker at Atalanta? So Atalanta had, uh, no, no, Atalanta would have one attacking mid behind like two strikers. And mm -hmm. then, uh, so sometimes it would be like a two in front, and that second striker wasn't always an out and out striker. It was like somebody that could pl that like a, a a big like a big little type of thing, and you would have an attacking mid behind them. Um, I mean, but I feel like you know it is a bit of a trap question that because like you know there needs to be an issue first to discuss this. In my opinion, I can't approach this like that. They're both two amazing players, and yes, Thomas is going to move on within the next two years max. Uh, or at least I should say, I don't know if he has that Mathieu Valbuena, you know, character in him to stay and and retire at Olympiacos. But Pepiel should definitely not leave. That guy is a gem, right there. That guy, you can sell that guy for, for crazy money. Yeah, no, I think I. But we we have fallen into the same trap as a team that Copenhagen did when they first brought him in. We're only playing him on the wings. And the, Copenhagen did the same thing. He was playing out wide. They saw nothing from them. Where they finally got value from him and end product from him is when they played him as a 10 and when they played him as a false nine. That's when they started to see the best from him. And he started the season with Copenhagen the same way he did finish the season last season, which was on fire. Uh, and it's no surprise to me that we haven't seen the best from him because we keep playing him out of position. I I personally, I don't see him as Pep, Pepiel as a bad investment. I think that this is a player that we've misused, which is why we're not seeing the best out of him. But for now, it's, look, every game, every game that we play right now, we're playing with the the hot hand, right? You got to play with who's, who's going to giving you the end product. Biel's on a long-term contract with us. I don't see him going anywhere. But we've we've seen we've seen that we can't play both James and Pep Biel at the same time 
uh, or at least having one play out right and or so on and so forth. I would rather see us use Pep BL maybe as a false nine or play him as a 10. Um, and maybe he sits on the bench while Hamas is playing. I'd, I'd rather see that uh, personally. I, I'm getting sick of seeing both him and Hamas on the field together. And then we lose width on one end while at the same time we have basically a non-functioning winger going forward in Masuras on the left. I, I don't want to see that anymore. So for me, it's I'm, I'm only playing one at a time. And right now it's got to be Hamas. Hamas has a goal contribution almost every game. I mean, he had one technically today too. It just got called back. This guy is so, and he he's he makes these wonderful passes every game. Hamas is Hamas like will get out of a tricky situation just like uh, Imbam Huang does, and then you see a gorgeous like long ball played up perfectly to somebody's feet. He's too quality not to have on the pitch, and he's too important to us right now. Uh, Pep Biel, unfortunately for me. If we're only going to use him on the wing, we've seen that it's just not – it just doesn't work. And he's a talented guy, and I think he has – a like at this club, he'll be very important, and there will be a time where he comes good. I'm not worried about that. But right now, this this thing, it just isn't working. So I'm going with Hamas. I'm keeping Pep Biel on the bench and subbing him in at a, an appropriate time, whether it's as a false nine or as a number 10. But that's how I'm using them. Um I, I want to wait for the yeah. preseason. I want to wait for that preseason. See Maybe how it happens. Something could come. Something could come out of it. Um, I believe. I believe so as well. Um, there's another really good comment here. Uh, actually, there's two of them. Let's go. Let's go to this one first from Costadino Steph. Hey guys, a third of the championship gone, and we're 12 points behind Bao. We didn't win a big match from July. Big match meaning no Europe and no Derby. I'm seeing the improvement, but we need defensive stability, two quality transfers. So, uh, Cosadino, I'm going to make a caveat there because I see what you're saying about the defensive, but the the center we talked about this earlier. The center back and the goalkeeper right now, that's we're we're great there. It's more the wing back situation, um, quality wing backs that we can get forward with. I think Avila, considering that we brought him in as a backup has done a lot for us considering we didn't want him as a starter and he's been playing as a starter. The problem with Avila is clearly he's not up to these derbies. He gave he uh, he gave away that penalty against Panathinaikos, losing concentration, and today he gave up uh, in the first half alone two chances that almost led to bat. He gave the ball up letting, leading to a counter that almost gave up a goal for Ike two times today. Really, really bad situation. And he's done that in in two big derbies in a row. So um, I I think we've gotten more out of Avila than we could have expected if we're looking at things top down whole season so far. But uh, I I just don't think he seems to be a derby guy right now. Or maybe he just doesn't really understand the the gravity of these derbies and hasn't showed up for them. But then on the left side, you know, Rebchuk, I don't have to say anything more. You guys have seen the data. We've put it out time and time again. I've made my feelings about Rebchuk, uh, how he gets forward, how worthless he is getting forward on a hole for me. I want to see Doran Leidner. Doran played against Galamata. I thought he actually looked pretty good. I watched a replay of that game. Um, but speaking of that game, that B game, guys, Abdul Abdulaidabo, ho, 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 that kid, that kid looks good. Um, yeah, he does. Anigo, uh, Jose Anigo had a, uh, or was it Anigo or Carabé? One of them, when they talked to um, uh, Lekip, they talked. Uh, they talked about Dabo, uh, talking about him being. You know, he will. He, it's up to him to take the chance the club gives him. But uh, injuries have given him a setback, and he's going to be important for this club. Guys, keep an eye out because that that kid's. Uh, he's got some talent. He's got some talent. But um, yeah, Costa, I think. Um, I think you agree with me there that it, the defensive issue isn't so much the center backs; it's more the full backs. Absolutely. I mean, I've said it. Uh, uh, the, the fullback curse is still very much alive. No quality fullback since the 2019-2020 season. Like I said, guys, there's four left-back options that would be a curse, and Ole Kreabchuk is still playing. Uh, <laughs> it's it's becoming almost a meme right now. Uh, I wonder if Ole Kreabchuk can even sell him, to be honest. I don't think they can. Uh, yeah, it's not a centre-back issue, guys. As for transfers... I would rather see players leave in uh, in January. Like I feel like it's so sad to still have Costas Fortunis in the team when it's 
obvious there's no vision for him anymore and it's just you know uh, it's it's basically like living with your ex you know it's like you know you're married to someone you you break up and you still live together it's a bit sad really at the end yeah. of the day uh like i said this is a team created by three different managers someone made uh, uh someone shared a comment saying this and i completely agree with this and i really apologize for not remember the that person's name but some really tough decisions will have to be made uh, in the summer. Some players will have to be axed, even big names. And I'm, I'm talking like all the Versalicos. I mean, there's no point anymore, is there? I mean, if we're getting nothing and if, you know, the money doesn't pay off, some really important decisions will have to be made. And when it comes to adding players, I mean, Olympiacos need a good winger, in my opinion. What else? I mean... Two fullbacks. That's it. Two fullbacks. Yeah, we need two fullbacks. I mean, well, hold on. If I, I think, I think that Oleg could have a place in this team. He has a place in this team at, at the very least as an alternate. Yeah. Um, but uh, I want to see how I want to see how do, that the Israeli left back does. Dora, I want to see him yeah. in the first team because I think if if we introduce him. Right, we immerse him into the first team. We see what he has to offer. I'm going to tell you guys, offensively, he's going to be lights out. Maybe the argument becomes defensively. Okay, maybe Oleg's better. Whatever. We'll wait and see that. Even though defensively, the left side's been garbage and super weak this season anyway. But I think if we see him, he starts playing, and we have a healthy competition between somebody else and Oleg, then I think that solves a lot of the problems with the left side. So I, I still see that that this kid Dora Ledner is a is the solution for us at left back. I still yeah, see but that he doesn't first. play him though. The, the the reason why I'm saying two fullbacks, one right back, one left back, is because I'm approaching it realistically in the sense that Mitzel doesn't play him. He doesn't rate him. Right. No, I, I I get what you're saying. I I do. I understand completely. I for me, I'm just pointing out that I see him on the left side at least as a solution. The right. No, I agree with you. I totally yeah. agree with you. And it's like it baffles me. The whole thing baffles me. Like even the whole excuse about him trying to get a Romanian passport. I've never heard that excuse for a player not playing in any team in the world. I've at least in Greece. For Europe, I get it. But for Greece, come on. Even in Greece, I don't think I've ever heard that before about a player yeah. trying to get a different a different passport. I just. <laughs> Ridiculous, it's, absolutely it ridiculous. It, it but yeah, really two is. fullbacks and uh, and the winger, nothing else. I want to see more from Samaseko as well. I mean, the guy has an insane release clause, yeah, and he's not playing at Olympiacos. I just don't get it. I just there's so much quality in this team that Mitzel cannot. I mean, there's been improvement, but Mitzel has yet to unlock uh, Olympiacos' full potential. And if he doesn't yeah. do it after the World Cup break, then what's the point with Mitzel anymore? He's the yeah. guy who's going to overlook the build up. Give me a break. Yeah. Well, of course, I want to um, I want to take uh, I want to look at something else before we start getting the man of the match coaches grade. I took issue today with the substitutions. I was not a huge fan of some of Michelle's substitutions today. Uh, going into halftime, our midfield was getting completely overrun. And I thought it would have been a good time for us to see somebody like Samaseko come into the midfield. We didn't see the change. We didn't actually see a change until the 61st minute. I believe it was the 61st minute when Gary Rodriguez comes in for Yorgos Masuras. Yeah. And I sat there and I thought, okay, well, Masuras was a player I wanted to see subbed out anyway, but it wasn't, for me, it wasn't like the, it wasn't the big issue that needed to be changed. For me, the, we needed something else in the midfield because even though we got we kind of got started very well in the second half, we we needed to do something to keep the midfield balanced because Ike wasn't stopping. We just happened to be getting a little bit more of the ball. But instead, we sub on Gary Rodriguez for Masuras, and Gary Rodriguez did absolutely nothing. Yeah, He had a point-blank shot in front of goal after the Socrates header. He had the, the rebound, and he just shoots it right into the defender in front of him instead of trying to get a little bit of air on it instead of trying to put it maybe just a little bit to the right he just try he just tried to hit it can he can, can can this guy produce crosses and shots every time i see him doing this he hits a defender oh yeah I, look he has days where it's he looks like the only out and out winger that we have then he has days like this where it's like who are you uh, but then the the forget just that sub right after that sub we went 
almost tw- another 20 minutes. No, more than 20 minutes before we saw the next sub. How is that acceptable when we're chasing points? We're chasing points here. We get a we get a, a, a goal called back off sides. We have the delay. I'm starting to get back into it. And you don't make any changes. You're sitting on your thumbs. Just, that's unacceptable. We didn't make another change until the double change where we brought on Marios Vrusai and Yusef El Arabi for Bakabu and um and Pep Biel at the time. Yeah. And but and again, okay, we made another change at the wing, we made another change for forward, but we still hadn't addressed the midfield. We hadn't provided more stability in the midfield like Samaseku. So all in all, I'm I'm sitting here and then then oh then of course we're hoping for a miracle out of Costas Fortunis in the 89th minute. Uh with like nine minutes. Like this is this is crazy. What you're, you keep putting Fortuny on when he's getting maybe nine, ten minutes. Uh, and that's that's of course with stoppages in between all of it. And he's getting what one or two touches on the ball. What are you what are you expecting? I, I, I never feel like we can get some of these big wins if we if we're not able to capitalize on something early out of Misha because he makes some of these decisions and they're just it doesn't make any sense to me. But how, how, did, did you have any issues with the substitutions today? Well, absolutely. I mean, like we said, I mean, uh, Costa said it, I said it, you said it. Olbergo seriously uh, struggled with uh, uh, Ike's uh, diamond formation. There was a serious problem in field. <laughs> Why wouldn't you bring yeah. a, a quality player like Samaseku on? Uh, I, don't, I didn't get that as well. Uh, there seems to still be some PMSD, post-Martin stress disorder at Olbergo's, <laughs> in the sense that, you know, Changes are still taking a good good hour to to happen. I was surprised there was no substitutions at halftime. I feel I felt like Samaseko should have come on uh, during halftime uh, to, to 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 give a, a little bit more power, a little more, a bit more flair in midfield that would allow Olympiakos to hit on the counter attack to find some space. Because that's what only that was the thing that everybody that's what only that's what everybody was saying before the match. It's I expressing versus Olympiakos's. Uh, movement with the ball, and I expressing one, I expressing completely dominated the game. Like we said, no Greek team has ever played like that at the Karaiskaki Stadium. I don't think any Greek team has ever played like that against Olympiakos as hosts at Oaka or uh, Rizupoli for that matter. Maybe Oaka, Rizupoli. I don't seem to remember that. Yeah, I expressing uh, absolutely dominated the game, uh, and there was. I feel like the, the the substitutions were a bit off. I don't know, like. As a total, I feel like, and that's my next question for you. I mean, we had this conversation a while back where you explained to me that it is important to win the to beat the small teams because uh, if you don't beat the small teams, that screws up your uh, confidence a lot more than not beating the big teams. Because if you don't beat the small teams, you think to yourself, "God damn it, we're not even good enough to beat those nobodies." Right. But the more time it takes for you to win a big match, doesn't that really have a? I mean. This is it, Ari. First half of the season done. Olympiacos haven't won a single game within 90 minutes or extra time in Europe. They haven't won a single one of their derbies. That includes Aris, who beat them. I mean, what kind of confidence do you come in during the second half of the season? And I mean, do you feel like maybe even Mitzel has a bit of a, a defeatist mentality right now? Like, we just can't do it. Or even if we do, or, or you know, something wrong is going to happen at the end like it always does. Or both. We just can't do it and something always goes wrong at the end. What do you think about Olympiakos' confidence levels? Look, I I think that there is a very high likelihood that it's the confidence is probably as you imagine it to be. Yeah. And all I can say is it's at that point, regardless of what Michelle's thinking, regardless of what the players are thinking, the most important thing for Michel is to go into this break like a as we brought up before it's a reset button you go in new new preseason new training for the players you know what yes we're minus 12 but you have to forget about that you have to get everybody to go through the motions reset make the the changes that need to be changed for the sake of the squad and then when you start the second half of the season Everybody's looking forward. We're forgetting about what happened in the past, and you're approaching it with a, with a fresh with fresh eyes, fresh mentality, and you're moving forward. As long as he does that, we'll be on the right path. 
we he has there's nothing he can do about the disaster that was going on before he got here. All he can do now is at the re, at the break, everything has to be reset, clear out the people that aren't supposed to be there anymore, and continue to move forward with everybody and get them focusing on what's in front of them. If he can do that, their mentality will be more positive and things will look better going into the next derbies. So that's what that's the biggest challenge for him. That's what he has to do into the going into this break. It's a big reset. And if he can keep everybody mo- looking forward, moving forward with that respect too, then I think he's uh has a much higher likelihood of having more success. If they continue to dwell on the past and what it's not going to do anything good for them, especially since he has no control of what went on, you know, during the the Pedro the Pedro Martins phase the the color the carlos corbaron phase he has to just look look forward guys what happened happened all we can control is game by game you can't look 50 steps ahead you have to do one step at a time approach this one game at a time one friendly at a time one training at a time that's the only way any of this is going to improve so that's the only way i see him being able to build any confidence out of this so again, I, I never played professionally, but the in the competitions I did play in similar scenarios I encountered, uh, any success I had was, in general, any success I had was with a coach that focused on the the day by day things. Look, we got to do this. We got we 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 did this. Now we have to do this. That result happened. Forget about it. We have to focus on the next thing. Let's win the next game. That's all we can do. At this point, that's all we can do. We have to focus game by game by game. We can't get ahead of ourselves. And we can only do what we can control, which is our game. We have to win our games, control our outcomes, which we directly can impact. That's it. I feel like it's a very good take. All I'm all I'm just saying is that, you know, the Olympiacos fans should be ready for everything right now. I mean, the Greek Cup, Olympiacos haven't even started at the Greek Cup right now. But even that, I mean, uh, you know. Anywho, anywho, like the way I see it, though, Olympiacos should at least... Uh, should at least fight for second place. It's very important that they get the Champions League uh, qualification. Uh, yeah, it is a reset right now, guys. But my God, what a mountain! In the, what a mountain they got to climb right now. Especially if Panathinaikos remain consistent. Especially if I continue to play this well, and especially if Olympiakos fail to, uh, to gain any consistency. Like I said, you can't win the title by just winning two games in a row once in a while. And Olympiakos have only done that twice. They've only managed to win two ga- league games in a row twice this season. That's all. Yeah. Well, Costa, we're approaching an hour, so it's mm-hmm. almost about that time we hit that segment. Um, before we do, always, guys, like and subscribe. A lot of new people jumping in. Almost 600 of you have passed through the show already since we've gone live, since we started going live earlier. So the uh, the number of viewers continues to get bigger and bigger. I mean, it's crazy. When we first started doing the YouTube shows, Ghost, I remember our first few shows, I think we had like maybe a hundred people tune in tune in. Now like the averages are over a thousand, two thousand. It's crazy. It's weird it's how incredible. big things get. It's so you witness the growth, and some of you have been here for that. Uh there's a lot of you that have been around for a very, very long time, and you guys have witnessed the growth of the channel. So help us continue to grow it. Hit the like button, engage directly here, add some comments. Help us continue to grow the community because the algorithm the algorithm is based off of engagements, whether it's likes, subscribes, or comments, all of those things. So, guys, do that, and we're going to enter the final segment of the show, man of the match and coach's grade. Let's get started. Uh, Costa Levoyanis, our friend, when he yeah. sent the video, uh, he also sent his man of the match and coach's grade as well. So we'll start off with his man of the match, um, which was... Socrates Papastathopoulos. So uh, Costas Levoyanis gave Socrates Papastathopoulos his man of the match. Costa, Costa K, Costas Lianos, who was your man of the match today? I feel like that's a great pick by uh, my namesake. I feel like I've already given it uh, away, but my man of the match is Alexandros Pascalakis. Some very key saves, absolutely consistent, inspired so much confidence. Um, this clean sheet belongs to him, in my opinion. If it was someone else i mean even thomas vatslik i'm not sure he would have made that run off his box to clear that uh, Envila error in front of levi garcia uh, i still feel like thomas vatslik is an incredible goalkeeper but 
I'm not too sure he uh, he's gonna. Uh, I'm not too sure this is a case of Pascal like is warming his position up because I feel like Pascal like is really earning this, and I'm really glad for him. Incredible performance and very key saves. Uh, he was very much up for it. Uh, if it wasn't for him, Olympiakos could have easily lost this. Alexandros Paschalaikis, man of the match. We've already mentioned Paschalaikis, Hussein Yuzel. We had a uh, an entire segment in which I apologized to him as well for underestimating him when he joined us. Yeah, and there was... Uh, um, I did the player rings earlier too, and I mm -hmm. also brought up that uh, uh, Paschalaikis was my man of the match with Socrates Papasathopoulos also getting a shout, of course. I mean, he, he yeah. had... Uh, he had... He had some very veteran moments today. Let's just put it that way. Uh, for me also, like him coming out way past the penalty area to come and save us um, after the the bad pass from Jan and Vila, I thought that was uh, uh, something I never would have seen from Bacilic or, of course, uh, at the moment from uh, Tzolakis as well. I, I think he would have been a little too timid maybe to do something like that. So top shot for me, and he's also my man of the match. But I think Socrates Papastathopoulos can get a great shout. Uh, guys in the comments, uh, for man of the match, make sure you you drop your comments here um, as well. So let us know who you think who you think your the man of the match was. Tell us who your man of the match was. Um, there were some people after the game that told me James for them would have been man of the match. I think that's uh, a fair shot as well. I mean, he was very he was very involved. He got into uh, he got himself out of a lot of sticky situations. He drew a ton of fouls. Uh, I would be surprised if he didn't have the most fouls suffered, uh, as they say on Y Scout, uh, for the game because he was getting. That's all I could do to stop him. They had to. They were fouling him left and right. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll we'll see uh, we'll see what it, what the data actually turns out. But he was. Uh, I'm Pascalak is my man of the match. A shot, I guess a shot could go for James Rodriguez and a shot also for uh Socrates Papasathopoulos, who had a uh a hero game today. Uh, and then there's coaches great, Costa. Yeah. Tell us your coaches great. Actually, our good friend Costa Levoyanis also gave his coaches great C minus. Uh, he yep. took issue with a lot of the subs as we mentioned earlier, but C minus. How about you? It's a C as well. Uh, terrible mentality with the, with the subs. Uh, Again, Olympiacos don't win a big game. This was a do-or-die thing. Uh, I mean, the way Olympiacos made it look with Panathinaikos was that uh, this is the game that costs Olympiacos the title, probably. No, it's not, guys. I mean, the Harilau game could have cost Olympiacos the title. The Pau game could have cost Olympiacos the title. The Ike game could have cost... There are so many games this season that could have easily yeah. cost the title. And it's not just one game. It's a lot of them. Uh, yeah, see, uh, that's a C. Um, subs took too long, wrong subs as well. We said it like the midfield needed uh, backup, Samasek was needed, in my opinion, in there. So, yeah, to me, that's a C for uh, Mitzel, and I expect to see much, much greater things in two months' time. Exactly, to basically, Olympiakos are playing against Pasianin on December 21, first game of the season after our world after the World Cup, first game of the second half of the season. And then in exactly two months, January 14, Olympiacos are playing against Taris at Kareskaiki. I expect to see something special that night, like really special. Well, let's hope so. Uh, coach is great. I'm, I'm gonna echo the same. Uh, I'll yeah. say, uh, I'll say C minus as well. I was just very unhappy uh, with the subs uh, and and the timing of them as well. Um, I. It, I would have I would have gone for a D, but we didn't get a loss, so that I probably would have given him a D or maybe even an F if if we had lost this game because of that. But uh, I think C minus is a very fair grade for for Michelle, all things considered. Um, yeah, and then you know now we look forward, we look to the friendlies that are coming up, we look for, to the B team, we look to the uh, the World Cup, of course, which is in Qatar. Uh, as we mentioned, we're going to be doing some. Uh, some shows about that. Maybe we'll do some shows covering some of the World Cup. Uh, we'll get more to you guys on that. We're for sure going to be doing a some things There's over the holiday. Friendly. There's a friendly against Nottingham Forest at the Orios Karaskaiki Stadium on December 10. That's going to be – that promises to be very, very interesting. I can't that's, wait myself. That's correct. Yeah, that'll be very cool. Uh, are you going to be in Greece for that? Hopefully. Hey, that would be really cool if you could get there. Maybe we can get our good friend Dor, Mr. Dor, on the show. 
yes, get one of absolutely. his buddies on the show. That would be a lovely, lovely, lovely uh, show, lovely event to throw. Plus, guys, um, during the during the holidays, we also do boozing with the boys. Um, as you guys know, we once in a while we bring uh, we drop a link so that you guys can engage with us on the show. I know we haven't done that in a little bit, but we we are planning on doing that again. Uh, but boozing with the boys, join us for that. We love seeing you guys. We love chatting with you guys. Uh, Hussein, I see here in the comments, some of you guys I met at the stadium uh, back when I was in Greece for the Pasianina game. We love interacting with you guys. We love meeting you guys. So we're going to drop all the information when we're going to do boozing with the boys. Uh, I believe our good friend George Carlambopoulos is going to join us for that as well. Um, so if you guys are around, please join us for that. Have your favorite drink, if it's water, if it's alcohol, whatever. Join us, and we're just going to have a chat. We'll talk all things, whether it's we're going to talk Olivia Cos, we'll talk whatever you guys want to talk about, personal stuff, whatever. Um, it would be a nice chance to get to know you guys, and you guys can get a chance to know us a little bit better. We'd love to get to know all of you guys. You're what makes Olivia the Gate 7 International so special. Exactly. The This channel is for the fans, and we're here to be your voice. Uh, we're here to engage you guys uh, just as much as you guys are here listening and engaging with us. So it goes both ways in that respect. And we're coming up on time. We've gone past an hour. Uh, over 800 people have tuned into the show at this point. Uh, always incredible live shows getting close to 1,000 views just during the course of a live show. Uh, Costa, do you have any closing thoughts before we go ahead and close up here? I just, I've never experienced that. I honestly haven't experienced that. It's very hard to predict where Olympiacos are going here. And I'm just, <laughs> if Olympiacos do come back from this, that is going to be the most remarkable comeback story I have ever heard in terms of a team winning a title anywhere. I just, I just cannot remember that happening anywhere, my opinion. Well, we'll see what happens, man. It's a long road, and Manos G7 dropping in some more bad news here. Socrates Papasathopoulos is out for three to four weeks. Oh, boy. Well, I guess it's a good thing it's the break coming up, so he's got plenty of time to relax, take it easy, and get ready for the uh, the winter reset. So, And we're also, guys, uh, as transfer season approaches, too, I almost forgot, we cover transfers all the time. So... Um, Make sure to stay tuned. Join us on social so you can hear the latest and greatest. Uh, we've got a lot of sources now. We've got a lot of people we can tap into, including yours truly over here, Cosas Llanos. Uh, he is a journalist for The Sun. He gets a lot of great insight for transfers. Uh, we pick his brain about them a lot. So follow us on social so you can get the latest. Follow Cosas Llanos also on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, are you on Instagram too, or is it really just Twitter? <laughs> Well, I am on Instagram as well. It's at Llanos Journal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, guys, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to be bringing you a lot of uh, transfer exclusives, transfer scoops, and transfer insight. Uh, so, uh, for some reason, I'm, I, I always almost call you Socrates because you look so much like Socrates. <laughs> I always do. Uh, maybe I could use you as a source. How likely are we going to are we to hear the name Gustavo Scarpa? Let me tell you, very likely for both Nottingham Forest and Olympiacos. Gustavo Scarpa go. will be named a lot, especially for Olympiacos of Nottingham Forest. Maybe one day I'll meet Socrates in person and be like, wait a minute, are we related? That would be a really great chance for me to get to talk to him. We'll see what happens. We're anyway, guys. I can, I'll try that. Don't you there dare you go. Show, you dare show, show him my picture. See what he says. That would be hilarious. Anyway, guys, thank you everyone for listening, especially if you guys made it this far. This is Gate 7 International by the fans, for the fans. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, almost 850 of you guys have tuned in at this point to the show. Uh, very crazy considering where we started. So we're always so happy and so humbled to see how many of you join in to, to chat with us, to engage with us. So difficult, difficult times ahead of us, but there's a lot of, a lot of silver lining there is a light at the end of the tunnel the team is playing better and better we're not mathematically out of the title yet even though it seems like we are but keep up to date we're going to keep you guys updated on our socials with all the news we get regarding upcoming transfers we're going to cover the world cup as well stick with us engage with us through all these times and we look forward to hanging out with you on the next show so until next time guys this is gate seven international enjoy what's remaining of the weekend Gatibagi, go! Opa, Jesus!